Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to this. Hello. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to this One Beat virtual marathon. Um, we're so excited to be here. And I am Kyla Rose Smith. I'm the One Beat US Programs Director. Um, and this is Elena. Hi, everybody. I'm Elena. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're about to witness uh, over three hours of um, original videos and live interviews and music and collaborations made by uh, the 35 fellows of the first session of One Beat Virtual, the first ever session of One Beat Virtual, which has been happening for the last eight weeks online. And um, we're so excited to be able to present this first virtual concert to you. And this is kicking off three days of live events, live online events um, developed by all of these wonderful artists and also our collaborating facilitators, many of whom are One Beat alumni. Tune in right here at www.onebeat.org today, tomorrow and Saturday for these events. And these um, fellows represent um, 17 countries and territories around the world and probably even more with counting our facilitators. So this is really exciting for us to be able to showcase a truly global experience. And I apologize for my face. <laughs> um, and we have been gathering together um, weekly over the last eight weeks, talking, working, collaborating, playing music, sharing songs. It's really been an incredible journey for all of us. Um, we are so happy to present our first work by Maria Mitrovic from Montenegro. Enjoy. Creation is an ingenious and delightful illusion. <laughs> Of course, it's much more than that, but allow me the poetic license of conciseness. We recorded the video. Seven times the okay, idea wonderful. of so healing, Gavin, of grief, right of resistance. I love the mix of people you. who are yeah. here. I love seeing everybody. It's just like, I don't know, this is like going to a buffet of Zoom like. Screen. Everybody's got these pigs. Like, that. <laughs> like it's, oh. It's a <laughs> more tomorrow. Which makes me wonder if all beings create. Reinventing. Sometimes innovation is the tradition. A positive change. Make something out of um, some type of resources, whether it's. Uh, happiness, curiosity, and new experience to be born. I guess. <laughs> to be open to <laughs> the state that I'm in. Right here, right now. New idea. Being able to take an idea from your head, from your thoughts, from your from your heart. Or to find what is perspective. Maybe break some nerves. The process of you being you. Was it new for them? Yes, that's a problem. Rush of adrenaline when I think. We have something new. I mean, something that has never been in existence before. You have your freedom. Passion. Do our before is different from our society? If so, why? Us as human why? beings, we are always... Is there just one time? More human with so, others. Which timeline should we follow? Your creativity are actually not is formed. just showing who you are. Do we think that still there's a key from them? Understanding the process. Sound it, uh, to be able to flow through the cycles of existence and the cycles of feelings. Is it new? new? What I would like to see manifested is what I try to create. Creation is movement. Realize that creation is one of the most important. Enable yourself to authorize yourself 
to be different and to manifest in an unexpected way. Creating is then attending to this land, this space, or this, I don't know, fermentation jar. They don't do nothing but kill and respond. So you should defund them and go get that money to something. Clipping the parlor before it start budding. I flip my flow and it's buzzing. Thought of the tree. Great things happen. Spontaneity can be an incredible thing. To, to the stimulus that I feed my senses. Describe one beat experience until now in three words. Investigation of desires. We connect with a child who souls. His challenge aspects. Haven, interesting, fun, and spontaneous, resonating, gratitude, thought-provoking. I feel that we are one. Bright ball of happiness. Welcome. Confirmation. Through many small actions, I create a piece of creation on earth. Improvement on ourselves. Physical, metaphysical, virtual, digital, in person, in real life, where those all of those worlds intersect. Um, I think about connectivity, collaborating. I think about playing instruments. I think about imagination. I think about listening. step by step that I will walk for me this is being present this is being aware of what I'm doing it's it's about bringing attention to every moment Ancestral 
Hi, Tsepang. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Kyla. So for everyone who's watching who maybe has no idea who you are, could you introduce yourself and tell us where you are? Okay. Um, my name is Tsepang Mabizela from South Africa, Johannesburg. I am a singer, songwriter, um, and a closet producer. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a new musician, actually. I've, I've worked in the event and festival world for uh, four years, you know, so my artistry took like, a, you know, um, took like a backseat until, until uh, this year. Uh, well, last year, I produced my first EP last year, um, and it was released this year, February. And I just wanted to put my music and my story in the forefront of what I wanted to say as a musician, because, you know, I just wanted to focus on, you know, the upcoming emerging and alternative music scene in South Africa. Um, yeah, so I dedicated four years to that. And now I was like, you know, it's my it's my time to tell my story. Um, and yeah, that's me. Um, Sepang, two things on that. You have a very interesting artist name. Tell me about that and why you chose that artist name. Um, that's, that's, that's actually very interesting. So I go by the name Soul. Um, the A is silent. I always tell people because they pronounce it <laughs> and like they call me Sawa and you know, whatever they, and, and it's okay. You know, so it's so, it stands for, it stands for socially awkward um, because I am, I really am for a very long time. I haven't, um, I haven't been able to interact with, with, with people in a, you know, in a, in a cool way, like I don't know how to interact with people in, in, in large settings. I spend a lot of time by myself uh, because I understand my space. Um, in understanding my space, I understand who I am. And I'm a very, I'm a very awkward person um, when I have to interact with other people. But um, I know who I am more when I'm by myself. So that name it's it's interesting, but it's also very true to who I am as an individual, as and as a person, and that's why I resonated more with that name um, because it's like an extension of who I am as a person. It's interesting that you chose to like be a festival organizer as someone who says they does don't like big crowds and being among a lot of people. Tell me about that. Here's the truth. Um, I'm going to tell you. Every event, <laughs> that I, every event that I create, right, I'm at the door. Um, and I'm, I know the door is like, you know, the point of entry. That's okay. But people leave and they go inside. So I'm the, I'm the door, I'm the doorman of my events. Um, and the festival that we created, uh, We Are One Music Festival, I, I had like, there was a secret room. I spent all the time there. I didn't see I saw probably fifteen percent of the performances. I don't know. Uh, people were like, "Oh, the festival was amazing," and I was like, "Was it for real?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I literally, I don't know what happened. And I love the artists that were on the lineup. I love all of them. I mean, um, a fellow that was here, Ubongeziwe Mabanga, was a person uh, we booked for the festival, and and. I was like to my partner, we need to get Ubongi Ziwe. And then I never saw him because of like <laughs> who I am as a person. I just got like weird. I was like, mm, I'll just, I'll go at the back. I'll see the videos. So yeah, I, I didn't see the performances. That's amazing. I think it's great actually, because I think in a festival space, one should have like a quiet room where you can like escape the crowd and like be in your own space. So I think you're perfect as a festival organizer because you will always make that quiet room for yourself at least. And then it will be there for other people. Because it's, it's, it's a room that's also there for, for artists. You know, at every festival, you need to always, you know, have a safe space that, you know, artists can just, calm down before events, uh, for, before performances, or just like cool down after their thingy. So we we are big on that, like creating really, you know, quiet spaces for artists. Um, and <laughs> we created a quiet place for organizers. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> this is just it was just me it was a space for just, <laughs> just because, oh no that's yeah. the tongue's room it's like, there. My, my my partners like they 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 appreciate you know who i am so much that they understand they don't they're just like yeah just do your thing you know <laughs> see you at the end yeah. so last question what has this experience been like what has one beat virtual been like both i guess back to like you it must be challenging like to be in a virtual space and also to be with like 34 strangers that you never met before. Um, what, what, now that we're at the end, like what has this all been for you? Um, you know, I'm going to use a word like a lot of people use loosely, um, but with one beat, it is so true. It's, it's genuine. Um, not, not just the space, but the people I was, when I started, I was like, how did the one beat like you know team um like get to um choose so many genuine individuals artists that are genuinely just nice people it was you know a lot of a lot of spaces speak on 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 on, on safe space and what like safe space means because we spend so much time saying this is a safe space because this is what's happening and this is what happens and like with one beat no one had to say anything. The space acted in 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 accordance of like of safety. You could say whatever you want and do whatever you want, and you were just met with warmth, love, you know, appreciation of like what it means to be an artist. You know, the good parts and the bad parts. Like sometimes we get nervous, and that's also okay. Like one one beat taught me like, okay, cool. It's cool to be nervous. Uh, no one is going to say anything. Everyone's just going to chill, wait for you to like collect yourself and just like, and be yourself. Like, so the, um, the definition of artistry here was so broad. Like it was, you know, the good parts, the bad parts, the anxious parts and, you know, the lovely parts and the great parts. It's just like it, um, yeah, it encompassed the journey so well within the space and like within the artists and, I'll appreciate it and I'm sure other artists will appreciate it forever because we got to be ourselves, you know, in, in a virtual space. Like it's so difficult being yourself in a virtual space because you don't know what you're gonna uh what you're gonna come across. But like with one beat, it was always safe, it was always good. And yeah, I appreciate it so much. And that's what one beat meant to me. Like we're not saying, hey, it's okay to be yourself. Uh, one beat literally created the space without saying anything and we were like oh this this is what it means to be part of one beat without anyone having to tell you it's like it's very action-packed you know everyone is showing you no one is saying anything but like you know the actions and everything is continuously re-emphasized um and yeah that's what one beat means for me that's beautiful tipa um, I can't wait to meet you in person in Johannesburg. Me too. Me too. I really can't. <laughs> um, and next up, we have an amazing performance from you sitting in a corner as you like to do best, it seems, yeah. <laughs> in a safe space. <laughs> in, in a safe space. Okay. Um, Thank okay. you. Oh, it's just chasing me, and I was chasing she Not quite as it seems, hearts will always leave It's all now just a dream like we once were Oh, it's just chasing me, and I was chasing she and Not quite as it seems, hearts will always leave It's all now just a dream like we once were Oh, it's just chasing me, and I was chasing she and Not quite as it seems, and hearts will always leave all now just see I'm asking for better days in her eyes the future when she smiles I come and see your foul for her a couple of times I'm asking to hit her knees if she dare touch the ground I'm asking to move let's hope that her heart makes a better sound because the paper sound is hills in my moves so I climb the mountain meet me in a maze next to the fountain let it coin resemble justice poetry is not for hardship pencil to pencil not for marking be stationed and reach the hardest keep it moving said the marksman listen and the the ground for strokes of broomsticks patterns of charmers and missing footprints you're twisting her arm i'm touching her heart and you're rhyming my favor don't forget to dance the roads mind if we need get expressive freedom 
next to the trees and the papers to get the sketch pads and the staples. Hope you got the right hand and you got the right foundation. Cause it won't appreciate your rules of eye. Never was chasing me, I was chasing she. Not quite as it seems, hearts will always be It's all now just a dream like we once were always just chasing me. And I was chasing she. And not quite as it seems, and hearts will always be It's all now. I remember when I cried. Tears like raindrops when they fell down. Don't forget that all love takes time. So take yours, don't take mine. Don't take mine, don't you remember when I tried to hold you back from all your past lives? And now our time is up, and it's only him you trust, and no room for me, no room for me. Always just chasing me, I was chasing she Not quite as it seems, hearts will always be It's all now just a dream like me once were Always just chasing me, I was chasing she Not quite as it seems, hearts will always be It's all now just a dream like me once were Always just chasing me, I was chasing she Not quite as it seems, hearts will always be Chasing she, I was chasing me. Not quite as it seems, hearts will always. Menester de la 
Pés da Santa Cruz, você se ajoelhou em nome de Jesus, um grande amor. Ok. Ok, so. That's it.
Du alte lærdo, krabbe borte. I nagulottet at stedet, hørte seg. Skjøtte jeg ber, jeg har vei. Skjøtte hun. Jeg miste. Gjør jeg seg inne flotig. Jeg ser jeg seg og jeg vei. On that bridge that goes into the sea, I stood there. Remember that time when I would see you here, bloop 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 bloop. Hi, hi, window. Feeling the wind, the brush. You look out the window on the sea, and you see your car with so what are That's so pasted on your face. I on the jeans, like jeans. The salt, and and you just crossed over, and you laughed so much. Yeah, there was a line just right there. <laughs> and you only ate eggs we went there together girls
Do this, Tian. Hey, welcome to Tian and Maria. Nice to see you. Um, thank you so much for um, this beautiful collaboration and video that you put together for our marathon performance. I'm just so curious how this collaboration came to be. Can you tell me about the origins of this piece? Yeah. Maria, you take this. <laughs> yeah, I'll just start with because uh, our what we found uh, together with each one is uh, that we found very attractive movement, like movement in sound, movement in uh, around us. So we decided to start collaboration in this way to explore movement in audiovisual sense. So we started to record around us, to listen around us, and to share these things. And in the end, we even shared our intimate stories to just to try to connect as more as possible. And in the end, it, it resulted after so many one beat meetings and so many influences by Liz Lerman and others, we just decided to do Zoom call in real time and to use this virtual frame uh, to share all these experience, what we did with our pre-recorded videos and sounds. So it really came up with uh, some kind of virtual connection, instant connection, because we did choreography and even visual, doing visual objects, use all potential of Zoom to actually really, really come close to each other through this kind of exploring movement. So yeah, this, this, this was quite amazing experience for me. I don't know how it's for Tian. <laughs> It's so fun. I think the whole process is just, you know, meeting and greeting and just playing lots and lots of play. Like most of the things that we did will never see the light of day, but it was so fun getting to see how Maria looks at the world, the artistic eye, the artistic ear. And also then we had uh, started sharing, you know, what were we seeing, how are we doing things. And it's like taking a, a peek into someone else's like cogs in the, in the black box. And, and that was just always fun. Wow, that's beautiful. So did you put the piece together and edit it together to um, collaboratively then, like every step of that process? Yeah, actually, at all the process, all this month, we shared, we have our drive and we shared our pre-recorded videos, pre-recorded sounds. But what we actually put for presentation is this would happen in real time as a result of all these pre-recorded things. Mm -hmm. So I think th this was kind of change of the plan because we didn't share our process, but we shared our real time or an instant connection. I think this, this would happen. <laughs> And I can see over the, the past eight weeks that you're both such interdisciplinary artists in a way that feels limitless to me, how you approach your art making. Um, is there anything that you want to share about how you became that way? Or have you always just had that, uh, that impulse? Either of you or both? Right. Uh, for me, it's I started writing I started training as a composer and at some point I realized that my teachers are telling me that the things that I'm bringing to class is not composition it's something else and when I got to find like find teachers who go like you're a performance artist you're not a composer that's that's when I realized that I have never really written in just a thought in just pure sound and so then that's when I was like oh my gosh I've liberated there's a thing called that's, that's interdisciplinary stuff so that's where I went and never looked back mm. Yeah, for me actually it was the similar because my piano professor just told me, Maria, you will maybe not be classical pianist, but you will be the artist. And this is what now I feel like. It's, it's not that I use one category, one medium to, to express my creativity, but really I don't see any boundaries any, any, any anyway. So now it's, it's actually the same story. I just don't, don't search for one medium, but I see that even sound or, or composition can create by any medium. There is no anymore I think mm -hmm. for me well you've really found a special connection I think with one another and um thank you so much for putting never together. letting you go <laughs> <laughs> this is as we yeah. say this is just the beginning and I really look forward to seeing what the two of you make together in the future and with everybody else in the one beat virtual program so 
Thanks so much for putting together such a beautiful piece. Really, really enjoy it. Thanks, Oila. All right. All right, thanks. See you later.
لغة الإنسانية لغة الإنسانية
Okay, so I'm joined here uh, by Marcios, all the way from Brazil. Marcios, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so we're about to hear a piece of yours um, that I am really excited to, to check out. Can you tell us a little bit about it before we go into it? Sure. Um, it's, uh, I called it uh, Gravity Slices 1 and 2, Counter mm -hmm. Counterpoint. It's a bit of a, it's like a five minute piece where I play with some ideas that I have in regards to European counterpointing, how to flip those images of that tra tradition and bring it to some thoughts of some authors that I had some interesting. Yeah, oh, nice. And the piece um, centers around a particular instrument, is that correct? Can you yes. tell us about <laughs> that, about what that instrument yeah. is? Yeah, I'm often working with harpsichord. Um, um, I'm just very interested in the Baroque period, especially in Brazil, in Minas Gerais. Mm -hmm. And I'm often working with different tunings for the harps harpsichord. So I, I'm using two instruments, actually, the charango, which is a Bolivian traditional instrument, and the harpsichord. And I was interested in studying how these two behave together. That's awesome. And are we seeing you in your studio in this video for this piece? Yes, <laughs> you're seeing it in my apartment's living room. Okay. Um, my studio, like, I don't really have much equipment, just two mm -hmm. MIDI keyboards and mm -hmm. my push. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is the, the space that I'm often in. Like, I don't really leave this space often, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And can you just say a couple words about how this one beat virtual experience has been for you? Surely. Um, I will try to not be too long on this because I can mm -hmm. speak on this for hours, honestly. But mm -hmm. I don't think I ever been in a space with as many creative, incredible musicians in my whole life. Like mm -hmm. I've, it's so fulfilling to a degree that it's hard to explain, mm -hmm. and it's very heartwarming too. And it gives you. Someone asked me to uh, describe it in three words, Max Maria, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And I said it was exploration of desires. I think that's really it. Um, beforehand, I had a lot of desires in putting myself in a contemporary music space and explore myself in that space and my music uh, and how it relates to the 21st century and beyond. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like ready to really dive into that. And again, I can go <laughs> for hours on this. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, we're so thrilled to have you as part of this One Beat family. Um, thank you for joining us. And thanks for this awesome piece we're going to check out next. Sweet. Thank you. All right. <laughs> see, you, see you soon, Marcias.
فرصت مانا متون عشق را به معرفت مانا متون در نداری مشت خود را با متون در نداری مشت خود را با نداری مشت خود را و آمدون کل نداری مشت خود را و آمدون کل نداری Hi, Kala. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, Ranga, for, for those who are watching who have never met you before, tell mm -hmm. us who you are and where you are in the world. Okay. Okay. So, hello, everyone. My name is Ranga Puramaji. I'm a composer, a life coder, also a video artist, and doing some digital artwork also. Uh, Right now, I kind of like um, stand as a program director in this uh, community of contemporary music called October Meeting Contemporary Music and Musicians, and also one of the initiator in Paguyuban Algorithm Indonesia, which is some kind of like an open community for um, Indonesian people or everyone who kind of like interested uh, in knowing about life coding or algorithms on all those related with that. Yeah. Ranga, you have um, blown our minds a little bit here at One Beat, I think, with your live coding performances. Um, my question for you is live coding as a musical form. Um, tell me, what is that all about for you? Mm -hmm. How did you get into it? And what do you find sort of like liberating about mm. it as like an instrument of choice? Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, again, like live coding. I think like for me, like how, 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 like how I kind of like get into that is actually starting after, after I kind of like finished uh, learning from my uh, computer music teacher. He's also my senior. His name is Tony Mariana. And me and some friends, we kind of like learn about uh, Max MSP from him and also learn about certain past synthesis. And then after that, I remember like my Tony Mariana kind of um, told us to um, form an ensemble for uh, our last kind of like ass assignments or examinations. <clears throat> and so we decided to just use the name uh, title Klitih Bunyi. So after Klitih Bunyi uh, had this um, kind of like their, their own recital, just basically kind of like all of four of us, yeah, at that, that time was kind of four of us um, performing 
our own compositions and also having a collective compositions um, only using the Max MSB as a, as a, as the softwares uh, for for yeah for for the compositional tools and then um, after that we kind of like um, kind of like from, from starting from four it was kind of like turned into three three persons three peoples I mean and then after that I remember like Mastoni. Uh, send send us this information about a workshop, like I, I guess it's kind of like electronic music workshop, and it was supposed to be happening in a Surfer Garage, which is also an an art space in Yogyakarta, and um, the how to say like these friends from Darwin Laptop Orchestra actually the one who was going like uh, to to be the you know like the the, yeah, the, like the one, mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like the, the actual, the, the one who gave us about those informations. And I remember like, um, I met also a per, uh, this, this person from, from the, the orchestra, his name is Bong. And Bong kind of like introduced me with this software it's called Sonic Pi uh, at that time. And I personally kind of like amazed, uh, amazed in how, how Bong's kind of like works with that. And then I, I and I said like you want to try it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I kind of like like try everything that I, I prob probably know uh, from that software. And that's actually kind of like my starting point since I kind of like always, you know, like clue. It, it's, uh, it's it's whenever I type code and it's executed, it's kind of like blown my mind. And then after that, I start to kind of like back back to my home, and then I kind of like download it by myself. Learn it by myself, and then creating like certain certain some some samples work and see like how it, how this software works, and then I remember like deciding <clears throat> decided to create an album in less than like maybe less than five hours like <laughs> like an entire album out of that time, uh, like like to see and then I I just realized that how how practical it is for me since I also really wanted to kind of like perform um, instead of just like. Um, you know, like writing, writing notations, and etc. And at that time, it's kind of like, like, see, yes, that this is like, like an opportunity for me. And then after that, I kind of like dig into into the, the world of life coding more. At that time, I kind of like haven't haven't really understand about what is life coding actually, but more into kind of like trying this software, try that software, try that, try this, and and it's it's going 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 until I found. Um, this video uh, from Kingdom, which is um, also a live coder, I think he's from Canada, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And then it was actually to, like the, the starting point, I would say like the second starting point uh, for me, uh, knowing that, that there is actually more into the world of live coding in the case of music. And so I tried to kind of like install the software that uh, Kingdom used <clears throat> at that time, which is uh, Title Cycles. Uh, the one that I use during during the residency mostly, and then um, after that, like I remember, like kind of like having difficulties in, to in, installing that, but and then I made it, and then the first sound that that comes out from that software, kind of like the start the starting point of me, kind of like pursue, pursue it more, and then after that it goes. It's 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 actually quite a long story, but the like short short one is actually I made certain. Um, important peoples in my life or in, in this in this path of life coding, such as like Olivia Czech. Um, she's, I remember like Olivia kind of like contact me uh, and then asked like, like through Instagram, like exactly like, uh, hey, are you in Jogjakarta? I really want to kind of like plan to visit Jogjakarta. And at, at that time, I didn't even know like, like who is Olivia. And then I was kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. I will be happy. And then to meet, to meet, to meet and, and do something maybe. So you've you've kind of met a community of live coders and composers through kind of learning about live coding, like it's yeah. opened the whole world to you. Yeah, yeah, and actually, like 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 after after my meet after my meetup with um, Olivia, after we made also a performance sessions and also a sharing sessions in Live Batch, which is also an art space in Yogyakarta. It was actually like this, the another starting point to the community. So it's like kind of like 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 it's like starting from 
non until kind of like it's it leads me naturally into into this 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 path and yeah like, i mean olivia is like the 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 creator of hydra which is like a lifeguarding visual platform and everyone kind of like assess that through through a website and then it's actually iris saladino uh, also a lifeguarder from argentina who is inviting me to this community called click it is also a uh, a life coding community, life coders community in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, because there's also like like another another place, and it is kind of like also open an, a new new door, and like the whole journey is actually start from there. Until today, I kind of like like try to always remember like who it is and who, it, but I will say and, like there's so many. And what what about life coding? What do you love about life coding? As a composer, as a musician, what is the thing about it that has like kind of kept you so uh, excited? Yeah, I, I personally, I personally, actually, I just like found it like not not quite a long time ago, but I personally love how first one, uh, of course, the excitement, like how 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 the code, how, how you struggle to kind of like um, type syntax to form the the, the codes and the, the algorithms. And then how what like like to see how it works, and it's actually kind of like, um, like the first the first thing that I was super in, in love with it, but the second is actually like the neutrality, for me for me personally like like how how this could be literally kind of implemented with anything, since since it's it's also has this uh, idea of um, an algorithms and a procedure a procedure. Like I, I was always, I, I saw this, um, I saw this also a work, I forgot like who it is, but it's also like showing that life coding is not necessarily just like kind of like using always a soft, a, a specific software, but it's, a, it's a not, not, not bad, if I'm not just thinking like not bad. And then they kind of like put literally like, like certain um, command there. And there is a dancer who actually reacted to that into a movement. So I was thinking like, okay, if that's the case, then actually like everything is actually like also having the same frame as life coding. And, and, and that's like, like, like for me, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, maybe like a Eureka that, that there is a lot of things that could be explored. And also, also like maybe, maybe this could also say like the possibility is also infinite, but we don't know. I think, I mean, as long as you have computer, maybe that could be done, but could you also life code when there's no no computer? That also excites oh, me. That's interesting. That's <clears> kind <throat> of some of the things that we spoke about in exploring the mm -hmm. theme of one beat, the scoring, scoring mm -hmm. for uncertain times that scores are a set of instructions um, and how you implement <coughs> those instructions can differ that like makes a score, which is also, I guess, live coding is a set of instructions to a machine to do something and you don't necessarily always know exactly what the result mm, is going yeah. to be when you issue the instruction. That's really interesting. Um, thank you, Ranga. We are going to watch your amazing performance up next. Thank you, Carla. Um, thank you so much. Bye. Thanks to you too. Yeah, see ya. Again, may I have uh, permission to share my screen later? Permissions are on. In What are we?
we doing? Hey, Ranga. So actually, we are doing things. Um, and um, actually, I kind of like want to eat something after this. Yeah. What did you oh. What did you eat today? Um, some noodles maybe. Oh, Japanese noodles. Like wet noodles, like with soup or like stir fry. Hmm, stir fry. Yeah, stir fry sounds great. That sounds awesome. Super vegetarian. Oh, I would. Now that you say that, I feel like I also want some stir fry. Oh, you want to? Okay, you want to also like eat noodles, right? Yeah. Who doesn't want noodles? Noodles are the best. Hmm, I see. That's nice. That's also like super awesome to hear that you also love to eat noodles. Oh yeah, noodles and rice. I mean, rice is just tiny noodles, right? Yeah. You know, like today, I always want to say, well, like, I feel you know, like, like udon is like, a super like, noodle, like, and I don't totally know why you would try to argue to that anything else is really anything better than what we have. I'm, I mean, Ranga, what are we doing? Boom. What are we doing? Hi, my name is Gavin Ryan. I'm a percussionist from Casey, Utah. And
See ya. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I was so transported by that moment. I was, was like in the mountains <laughs> and floating in the ocean. Like, where am I? It's very beautiful. Um, welcome. Welcome to our One Beat virtual marathon. Thanks. <laughs> Is that Sorry, outside? That's, oh, my, that's yeah. very melodic. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, Alexia, yes. tell me, can you can you introduce yourself for people who are watching who maybe don't know who you are? Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Alexia Webster. I'm a photographer, visual artist, and I'm from South Africa originally, and now I live in New York City. Um, and I've been doing some one beats, uh, kind of being the photographer of one beat for a few years. Um, and, now I'm, and now I'm playing around in the virtual realm. <laughs> so this has been interesting because, as you say, you've been the photographer on one beat for a few years since 2016. And you usually come to the in-person programs and you're usually in the residency and you do all of these photo experiments in person with fellows. But where you are the photographer and you are encouraging fellows to kind of be playful as the models in a sense for these photos as the subject matter of the photos. So virtual presented, I suppose, an interesting space and also a challenge as to how you do your job of documenting or photographing one beat in a virtual space. Can you talk a little bit about what you've done um, to to step into this virtual world with the fellows. Yeah, I mean, I think that it kind of uh, raised this great opportunity because usually we all kind of gather in one space and we're disconnected from the world where we come from. Um, and the virtual space was just this kind of amazing opportunity to go into, to get an insight into where people are and to kind of give us their, their world a bit. So I, and also to like allow for um, uh, uh, people to express themselves and trying to help uh, give that space to do that. So the so what the kind of idea was was just to set a series of like prompts to just like push people to go out into the world and gather images and also to create their own um, photographs and then send them through and share them with each other. Um, and so, yeah, so there was a few different things like a self-portrait where you make your music, um, go and show us the, we did a little series called Wish You Were Here where we kind of asked people to go and send, go out into the world outside of their Zoom space and like show us where they live and the landscape in which they inhabit. And it was really amazing just to see the kind of variety of spaces that, I mean, because One Beat really is this incredible global uh experience and here we got to really see like you know like I don't know the ocean and the mountains and the city and just like all these different places around the whole world where people are um, and it was really beautiful to get that insight into people's worlds and I think uh, that was a kind of very special thing that virtual offered us. And so next up, we're going to watch you for this marathon have put together some edits, some photo, mon photo and video montages of what the fellows submitted. Next up, we're going to watch one which was titled In My Dreams. Um, it's a really beautiful edit that you've done. Can you talk about what the prompt for this for these photos was to the fellows? Yeah, well, I thought it would be really interesting to to kind of push into a little bit more of the subconscious world in which we all inhabit, especially because we're in this virtual space, which feels semi-subconscious anyway. <laughs> um, so the prompt for this was just to um, photograph, uh, um, to kind of photograph yourself in your dreams. Um, and that's a kind of really broad thing to say in some ways. So like one of the ideas was uh, the kind of pushes to do that was just ask people to kind of journal, like have a little notebook next to their beds when they go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning and just kind of jot down some of their dreams or some of the feelings and uh, textures from their dreams and then kind of try and recreate either a dream that you had or recreate a kind of space that you feel like um, your dream world occupies. And people just came with the most amazing stuff. I was so blown away with like how 
deep people got and how playful and how strange and just wonderful. It's just a really beautiful, surprising, amazing um, uh, project. I'm really, I'm really, really impressed with what people did. And just also like how kind of wonderful it is to, to look at photography in that way. It's like not just a kind of pure document of the real, but also of the sub, the subconscious and the, un, the unreal. <laughs> It's really great. It's really great. Um, you are watching the One Beat Virtual Marathon. A reminder, this is the first ever virtual um, edition of One Beat. This is the first session. These are our first 35 fellows from all over the world. It's been an incredible experience the past eight weeks. Um, hopefully, this is just the beginning, as we keep saying. Um, and I want to thank the State Department's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs that makes this program possible, and especially a shout out to Julia Gomez Nelson, our programs officer there. Um, next up, in my dreams. Thank you. 
So I'm joined now by Owen, uh, who is joining us from the Philippines. Hi, Owen. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Um, I want to thank you for this beautiful piece that we just saw of yours. Um, can you tell me a little bit about this piece and how you created it? Cool, yes. Um, this piece is entitled Adhika. 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 Mm -hmm. um, it means vision mm -hmm. or goal in English. Mm -hmm. And I've sort of made a graphic score for this piece. Mm. And it talks about or it expresses about how my project is, like mm. the Salin Musica, where I um, make two worlds or two communities collaborate with each other. Mm. So basically, there are two flutes in this piece, mm. and they try to like um, meet halfway at the end. And you can see at the beginning where um, the piece presents the clashing notes. Mm. Yeah, so it sort of depicts the the differences of these communities. And while it progresses, it somehow um, blends with each other. Mm. So, yeah. yeah great. <laughs> And you are in a one beat virtual elective um, that deals with with illustration and drawing. Is that correct? Yes. Is that how the illustration element came into this piece? Or have you been doing a lot of that already? I have been doing a lot of that kind of animation, if mm -hmm. I would say, um, before one beat, but I, I found it fitting for this piece mm. because f first of all it's more practical for me <laughs> than, than to shoot myself and second I think I could express myself through animation better than mm. just um, putting myself on a record on a video record so yeah um, a visual the visual part of the things that I, I make is, I think, sort of somehow d defines who I am as an artist. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, I really like visual arts and I really want to, as much as possible, I really want to um, connect it with the, the works that I make. So, so yeah. <laughs> Can you say anything more about how animation and visual arts allows you to express yourself more? Oh, um, well, it, with with my elective being enabling me to be childlike in in producing sounds, mm -hmm. I think animation um, does it does the same way for me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I feel more free. Mm. And it's 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 a liberating feeling in to animate stuff, abstract stuff like the circles, the, the lines and stuff. It's just mm -hmm. um, somehow therapeutic, therapeutic for me mm -hmm. <laughs> in some way. And um, it has been always my well. I'm not an animator. Well, mm -hmm. for I just learned animating during the lockdown so mm. oh, um, wow. <laughs> yeah um, but I'm doodling doodling before so I think that influenced me like the also the desire to like see the, the my illustrations move in a certain manner and behave in a certain manner like sound does mm -hmm. so. that's wonderful Thank you so much for sharing that with us and um, really enjoyed your piece. So thank you for thank contributing you. that. And um, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks, Owen. Thank you.
Hey everyone, I'm here now with Kiran Nepali, who's joining us all the way from Kathmandu, Nepal. Kiran, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Elena. Of course. Um, so we're going to see a piece of music by you next, and it features some really beautiful, lovely images from your country of Nepal. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're about to see in here? Uh, the music is all about the soul connection. So everything was an instant feeling of being here in Nepal, especially close to the mountains. So the music surrounds the environment of the mountains as well as the local cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a free flow music that came from the heart. Mm -hmm. And I did share the music with my uh, fellow one bit friends. Mm -hmm. And there was only one room. They were only playing on sarangi, so everyone had a different tracks. So later on, when we mixed it, it came out really beautiful. Mm, that's great. And can you tell me a little bit about the instrument that's featured in this piece? Uh, the first thing is my instrument sarangi, which mm -hmm. is a traditional ethnic folk instrument of Nepal. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, Maria on keys, then Miguel on uh, double bass, especially uh, he didn't play with the fingers, but rather he was playing with the bow, mm. which really synced beautifully with the sarangi. Mm -hmm. And we had beautiful Anna with her amazing voice mm. on the track. That's great. And is that your sa sarangi behind you? Yes, there it is. Yes. <laughs> Um, and Kiran, you do a lot of interesting work with uh, preserving traditional music in Nepal. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, basically, I work with traditional instrument. I have a uh, contemporary, folk contemporary band called Katumba as well, where we try to uh, recreate the folk music into a different style. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, through my project, I'm trying to make the folk instrument cool actually, mm. cool and trending. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have been uh, really evolving the instrument as well as supporting the community to uplift the folk instrument. And the best way we could, we could think about was creating a better platform for them. Mm -hmm. uh, because in Nepal, there are so many different communities and each community is so much rich in music Mm -hmm. But it has been stuck because it couldn't came out. It couldn't come out of the community. Mm -hmm. So people had hesitation to share the music, mm -hmm. share the musical instruments. So where we come, making taking those music, also the instrument, and bringing up to a proper stage, performing stage, as we see in the concerts, because usually the music that we see was only on the streets or mm -hmm. only played during a festival or for cert certain regions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we bringing that music into a performing arts mm -hmm. where we could inspire a lot of youths from the same community as well as other community to uh, play it and also be proud about it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, usually the youth thinks the folk instruments are very boring but we are trying to make them so cool that they want to be proud of that instrument and pursue that music ahead. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Great work and um, really looking forward to hearing and seeing this piece, which is like a love letter to your country of Nepal and moved by the soul of the mountains. What a wonderful description. Thanks for joining me, Kiran. See you soon. Thank you. Okay.
Hi, Tegan. Hi, Kyla. Great to see you. You too. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, so for those watching who maybe don't know who you are, can you introduce yourself? Tell us where you are in the world also. Absolutely. Yes, my name is Tegan Farron. I'm primarily a violinist. I do all sorts of string playing. I'm currently in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but I'm based primarily in Brooklyn, New York these days, where I do a lot of contemporary playing, uh, experiments with electronics, and a lot of tango playing as well. Nice. Tegan, your piece um, that is part of today's One Beat Virtual Marathon, tell me about that. Yes. <laughs> Why? Well, I wish that I could cook for everybody at One Beat, and I feel like brunch is one of the things that you cook for somebody that you're really, really fond of. It's a it's a very special thing because usually it means that they've stayed the night with you in your house and and you're hosting them. And uh, there's just so many things that go into pancake making. You know, I was told that brown sugar is something that you feed to people that you love. And so there's brown sugar in there and there's fresh fruit. And it's just this um, lovely dish that you can present. And actually at the beginning of our virtual session when we had the recipe share, this is the recipe that I shared with my partner. And so I thought, well, if I can't actually make these for people, the best thing I could do is show them how I make it. Uh, and when else am I going to be able to play all of these instruments together at once. It's certainly not something I could do in a live format. So I really wanted to take advantage of the virtual format and do something a little silly and a little loving. That's great. Tegan, what has this one beat virtual experience been like for you? It's been amazing. I think it has in large part been an evolution of previous experiences that I've had that have really shaped the way that I see myself as a musician and an artist. Uh, I think most similarly, the idea of the Fulbright that I did in Argentina, this seems sort of like the next level of that, of being able to go somewhere where people don't necessarily know who you are. And so you can really take the pieces of yourself that you like the most and amplify them and borrow pieces from your new collaborators that you like and, and shape them into yourself. And I think it's really nice to have this opportunity to reinvent or evolve yourself based on these different perspectives that you wouldn't have had otherwise. That's wonderful. I can't wait to see, I feel like so much is gonna come out of this one beat experience. Um, and I think particularly you, there are so many ideas that I can't wait to see come to fruition. Um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. I've got a whole shopping list of people yeah. that I'm going to work <laughs> with now and afterwards. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Um, we're gonna make some pancakes. Up Please. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.
I don't need to find myself. I found my tune and, and I dance for free. I bass for sports and I live for he. 2016, I found my voice. I sang to mend my bones, cannibal ghosts, ate from my shoulder to my soul and feet. A vagabond, a halfway heart who might bite the dust. Journeys all seemingly steep if you're not finding me trust. A comfortable soul where your heels may heal. I'm wanting to touch to know if your hands still may feel. Blood still finds ways to hearts to know if they still may beat. And I still may be a hesitant act as long as we still may be. I've honed my heart to always know where my home will always be. And then I go, I found, I found myself and fell in love. I found, I found myself and fell in love. Baby, that's happening. I found myself and fell in love. I found, I found myself and fell. To 017, I lost my queen, but it still rains on me. Puddles eat at my feet, I'm strapped on my boots and balance my knees. I'm begging for peace, break me off. Some of that groove and some of that funking at least. Verse from a book, she died, but I still needed a hymn. The father, the son, and my pops are believed. Stone gathering moss, family ferns and some weed. Sterns and he leads, he earns and he bleeds. Dough from his hands, self made to when he needs, he needs. Go, mabizelo tondil. No mum shabu poge, liko zil poge, zango mishoni, limpili fo stew, spongi pile konim shaben, pile yaku prayam, go bafel angazis bangin, and then I go back and say, I found, I found myself and fell in love. I found, I found myself and fell in love. Baby, that's happening. I found myself and fell in love. I found myself, I found myself and fell in love. And then that's it.
Hey, everybody. I am joined now by Dara, who's in space, aka Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> disguised as space, and um, Alina, who is joined by Sasha to help translate our interview today, who are both in Moscow. Thanks for joining me. Um, so I would love to hear about um, the piece that we all just witnessed and, and, and saw. Um, really, really beautiful, really creative. There are a lot of elements to it. Can you tell me a bit about what this piece is about and how this collaboration came together? Dara, maybe you can start. Sure. Um, Alina is like super down to just be doing collaborations with people. And so she reached out to me and asked if I would want to have um, a musical dialogue. And I was like, yes. And I loved, you know, cello club because we both play the cello. So that was really fun to like get to do a duet. Um, and then when we were talking about the music and what the piece would eventually become, you know, it was just like, do we have a concept? Do we have like, what, what are we going to like, conversate about or we could just do sound but Alina you know she really pondered and like paused for a moment and I was like okay like what's she gonna say and then she just said homelessness and it really just like settled with me and such a, like it was such a profound kind of I think topic to sort of explore and and you know meditate on just thinking about like yeah like how do I want to channel what I feel about this, um, you know, just state of life that so many people exist in living in New York, I, you know, encounter on a regular basis. Um, you know, it's, it's unavoidable. And I think part of the, you know, deep emotion is like, we're all humans. And so like the, the humanity of these people who just happen to be living, um, you know, in this particular situation, it was really like, oh, wow, like, you know, I, it just gave me like, a, it was a reminder of like how powerful music can be. Like when she, I don't know, it was just a really, it was a lot for me when she said, I was like, yes, let's do it. And so then we just started like sending things back and forth. <laughs> Alina, do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, I wanted to record some composition with которая бы соединяла наши два одинаковых на разных мира Москву и Нью-Йорк. Our two different and at the same time uh, alike worlds like New York and Moscow. Uh, и я не очень люблю говорить словами. I don't like to speak with words. Uh, поэтому для меня была важна форма музыкального диалога и когда мы нашли тему uh, того, что есть в каждом городе. Uh, and uh, that's why when we found this theme that uh, we could use a theme for our musical dialogue. Да, я потеряла мысль. В общем, мне хотелось исследовать, насколько разные, одинаковые являются эти проблемы в городах, но хотелось не забывать о том, что во всем этом есть какая-то определенная очень важная музыкальность и посыл. I wanted to find out uh, what differences and what similarities these two cities have uh, for this theme of homelessness, right? And uh, I just wanted to go down and и мне хотелось, чтобы мы не забывали, что эта категория людей присутствует, и если у человека нет дома, это не значит, что у него нет души. И и uh, в каждом, ну, во всех городах, когда мы видим бездомных, очень часто они играют музыку, и мы с ней почему-то очень часто не относимся как uh, к какому-то посылу uh, из глубины души. And uh, sometimes when we see, when we see homeless people uh, playing some instruments and music uh, outside, uh, we don't uh, we don't pay attention to it as a, uh, to a music that comes from the bottom of their hearts. 
Beautiful. Thank you. And I think that uh, we, we uh, managed to show it. We managed to make these people visible. Great. <clears throat> Thank you so much. It's a really beautiful piece and um, it's really fascinating to hear. I mean, especially in the last year and a half, how people have collaborated and just kind of shared ideas back and forth. Um, and I'm wondering how that experience, especially during One Beat Virtual, has been for either of you um, collaborating with people in this way and exploring thematic ideas like this. Um, do you have anything more that you want to share about that, Dara, perhaps? Um, just yeah, in general, it's been really cool to I've never like for example I've never been to Moscow. Um hopefully one day I can I can make it there but the opportunity to connect with so many different artists from, you know, over 35 countries and really get I mean there's so obviously there's always so much happening in the world but you know it, it's more of a like broader general distant kind of um thing that's never like you know oh i could talk to somebody who you know is living in afghanistan or something and it's like oh my gosh this is really intense like what your life is and you know to really just talk to the people and have that one-to-one -one, like this is your life you know and really just get, getting um context for your place in the world i think has been really i mean <laughs> enlightening and global I, I tr general I mean truly like you know I it's been really special that's great Alina do you want to add anything you have to unmute I believe can you unmute your video and maybe Sasha can you bring your mic a little closer when you're speaking thanks I'm gonna ask you to unmute can you unmute your video <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. There we go. Oh, yes. It's just okay. Yeah. I don't know how it happened. Yeah. Uh, я хочу сказать, что One Beat это какой-то отдельный мир, который я для себя открыла, и мне очень приятно uh, было познакомиться со всеми людьми в группе. И мне кажется, что я обрела новую семью. И мне кажется, это говорит все. Uh, one Beat. Uh, I think that. Uh, I uh, nearly opened a new world for me, and I found uh, a new family, and what else? <laughs> this uh, this uh, describes all my emotions. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thanks to both of you for sharing and creating such a beautiful piece and um, exploring such an important and moving topic within it. And um, and for joining me for this short conversation. I know you're both very busy. I know you're in the middle of rehearsal, Alina, so I appreciate you taking a moment to talk to us about this. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. देख रहा है देख लिया उसने तुझे पता एंड उसे जान के फैमिली सेटिंग एंड इज लाइक कि लेट मी जान के वो कर रहा है स्लो कर रहा है ब्लडी फक मैं नो दवा ना जा वेलकम टू माय स्फेयर विद देयर इज नो कलर नो फेयर नो डार्कनेस आई विल बी देयर टू अब्सॉर्ब ऑल यू कैन इफ यू शेयर I didn't know I didn't understand the languages surrounding me till I compared my human settlement in this sphere oh yes processing humility in its prospect potential in every day i got no chantable story to say i might change my way of thinking on a regular basis flow like a stream think like a team i'm mature enough for me to go lean upon the couch while you tell me your story or maybe maybe i'm bitten by an insect if i take a road to reach a place i didn't know i might just show whatever is beyond my intellect 
the most honest perspective I reflect. Let me know if we could connect now. Let me. One beat. One beat. Observing the time. In all my reluctance, adjusting to robust of vocalizing fears burns, tip of my tongue, rings a bell that to bell in time, has a reminisce on sampling the grit in my dequantified grit, designed to catch a noises, quick as a lesson of feeling secure, taking a risk, caught of God's stillness, becoming timely thicker, seeing my better self in your half is painful, I still miss the way you smell the Fulfillment of love amidst a world full of vindictiveness. I'd be happy to get a glimpse of your being in harmony. That crosses no limit but loss. To a dear what to process, I prefer gazing at stars in the night. By my side to let you coincide with my closed eyes. Open a new day with a clean slate, like to scribble vices. Eating more fibers controlled by devices, like I'd be thinking of you. Wondering how you're thinking of me. When do we meet? He said, we let the time speak. And yes, I've been making some beats for you all to listen to maybe in future, maybe now, maybe yesterday, maybe, maybe yesterday. just like the just like, just like, just like, like hey. Now, home sweet what? Sanction a bot under the bridge or built with a hand big brick. Field settle getting back to my oh so ridden tactic. Simmer been tangents on to a different life behind closed doors. Let self get exposed within. Defensed against who when? Nobody knows what I do or I think. Ridiculed in actions like hers and his. Offer an addictive might hurt a friend. Urgently becoming thoughtless of them trends like. Didn't matter much. Days as such offering poly optimism. Conscious beings, do you know what I mean? This jam right here is for old ones and teens. The hyper or the lean type of individuals who might just understand what goes beyond the tight dress. I might as well have something logical to tell. Bold ass sticker with this cell. I won't claim a spot by saying you know how we do. A little something me and Sam break down for you. Now see. Breakers and MCs form a 360 degree. I mean, no, to women with an ordinary flow. Surrounded by hate, but do we ever let go? No. Sampriti, let's go. Any debate upon a clean page, served in motions with dapped elements, beneficiary of chosen deeds, peel off your impersonated entire team. In a given time and space, why picture what you could buy your late on a deeper level? Throw some more pebbles, you might get a sip. Could receive in multitudes once scratch the surface. Our simple urges need to ban up beyond complex prism. His mind prefers becoming belittling fragments of your wholesomeness, de stress with consciousness, and less them in your way.
para todos verem. Eu a abro bem, o portal por onde tudo passa, a passagem para a vida. Eu digo, entre pelo meu portal, abra-se ao que existe. Se você tem algo importante, mostre, para que todos possam ver. Eu sou a abertura para este mundo, o sagrado e o absurdo, o selvagem e o bárbaro, o audaz e o impudente. Eu sou a bruxa, aberta por tantas voltas, destruída, isolada, trespassada. Eu sou o portal para a vida e digo,
Amazing. It's just such a sudden, sudden yeah. end. <laughs> Where's Alexander? Is he going to be here? Yeah, he's like, he's here. Yeah, <laughs> uh, portals. Sorry. Wow. Um, amazing. That has been an amazing almost four hours. Um, incredible music, incredible people. I actually want to thank all of these One Beat Fellows by name um, because they're just all so amazing and they've done incredible work. So Alexander, Alina, Amy, Anna, Andre, Chris Williams, Dara, Diddy, Gavin, Hannah Bukris, Hannah Selfanasa, Ilya, Ivana, John Owen, Zhu, Kieran, Manmeet, Masios, Marco, so many names, Maria, Miguel, Peter, Ranga, Rani, Sauce, Shayani, Stephanie, Tegan, Tian, Tsepang, Victor, Wajahat, Zoe. Wow. Um, so great. Um, that for everybody. So great. We have two more days of programming happening tomorrow and Saturday, Friday and Saturday, um, here at onebeat.org and streaming on our social media sites and on YouTube. So please join us again. There's gonna be a lot of very different kinds of content. Um, we're gonna feature a lot of work that these incredible musicians have been doing in small ensembles. And on Saturday, we're yeah, it's a surprise even to us. We're gonna have a big party. It's gonna be fantastic. So please join us again for that. And thank you so much to everyone who is watching. Thank you so much to these amazing artists. This is the first session of One Beat Virtual. We have a second session coming in September, a whole new group of artists um, that we will be working with and showcasing um, a very special thanks to Bang on a Can, to the ECA, to Julia, to all of our amazing facilitators, many of whom are One Beat alumni and who you will see in tomorrow's showcases, um, to all of the team at Fansound Nation. Uh, thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.